Alright guys, Sarah from Cross Buckle Homestead. I'm here with a really quick recipe for vegetable soup in the pressure canner. Makes it shelf stable so you can have it on your um, in your pantry for as long as you need and have it for dinner whenever you need it. Um, what I have done and um, I find that when you pressure can things, it cooks the shit out of them. So you really want to cut things in larger pieces. You don't need to skin things that you would normally skin if you were just making vegetable soup on the stove top um, because it's gonna cook all of that down. The small, um, the thick, everything that's thick will get soft, things like that. So you wanna be sure that you really cater um, your canning recipes, your pressure canning recipes to um, recipes that are gonna be pleasurable to eat once they're actually off the shelf. So you'll see here, um, I've started with some frozen green beans that I have um, defrosted. I threw in some kale, um, generally greens cooked to smithereens, but kale is a little bit hardier. I have um, put in some potatoes that I have cut up. I've left the peels on. That's where the nutrition is and the, and the vitamins are in the peels. I have put in some carrots that you'll see there as well. They are about half an inch thick. And then you'll see I've thrown in some celery, some celery and some corn. I've topped this off with some of the tomatoes that I've canned last year. So these are crushed tomatoes. I've added about, um, well, I'll give you the ingredients, I guess, in a minute, but I have added my canned tomatoes. I've thrown in some chicken broth, about a cup chicken broth and I've topped it with water about one inch from the top of the jar. So this particular recipe I used um, half a cup of chopped green beans. I used a half a cup of thick cut carrots. I used half a cup of um, chopped um, potatoes, quarter cup of celery, quarter cup of the corn kernels, and then three quarters of a cup total of the crushed tomatoes. I also put in half a teaspoon of salt, four or five of the black peppercorns whole, a clove of garlic, and I have added um, a quarter teaspoon of um, oregano and a quarter teaspoon of thyme. Now, like most of my recipes, I like to add the salt later, so it's just enough to kind of season everything. And then you can always add like parsley or basil um, to it once you get it out of the jar. Uh, you will absolutely want to make sure with this particular recipe that you get all of the air pockets out from the vegetables. Um, that's something that I tend to use um, a chopstick for. So you put the chopstick around the edge of the jar, get all those air bubbles out. You also will want to cook this for the length of time specified by the longest um, requirements in your um, instruction manual. So I've got this pressure canner cooker book here. Because I'm using corn, it does say 85 minutes. So when I say that it cooks the shit out of everything, it literally will cook it for far longer than you would if you would um, have it on a stove. So again, everything's gonna be soft, so you're gonna try and use ingredients that are gonna stay firm as possible. Um, so the larger carrots, the larger celery, the larger potatoes, um, things like that. I would not use like summer squash or like spinach, um, anything that's gonna be too delicate, it's gonna turn into a mush, and then you're not gonna to wanna to eat it once it, it comes out of the can. Um, so keep that in mind. The other thing that I find super helpful and this is, is I actually keep all of the rings on a piece of um, ribbon that I have hanging around. So all of my wide mouth jars are on one. All of my small mouth, regular mouth jars are on the other. And I tend to only keep the ones that are in good shape. Um, they do tend to rust after a couple of different uses, so I throw them away. I'm constantly buying new cans. Uh, and jars, and so I constantly have a source of new um, jar rings. Um, when you do store these, when they're done, um, you will want to label them and put a date on them and remove the ring. So 
the reason you remove the ring is so that you can tell when they have gone bad. Um, if you leave the ring on, it's possible you would miss that. Uh, but if you um, store it with the ring off, then the ring will or the lid will pop off if it does tend to go bad. So it's just a easy way of keeping your family safe. So again, um, we've put enough liquid in this to have an inch of headspace. We've used green beans, carrots, celery, corn, potatoes, kale, and tomatoes in this particular recipe. And then you can cater it to what you have on hand. Um, you know, I could have used fresh tomatoes if I had had fresh tomatoes, or if you really like Italian spices, you could have put some basil in there um, right off the bat. So really just cater this to exactly what you have in hand, and you'll always, well, you'll never go hungry, really. I mean, it's just it's something that's going to go in your pantry. Um, we are using the vegetable stock uh, soup just because we found that we were actually um, canning things that had meat in it more frequently than not. And so we really don't tend to eat that much meat on a regular basis. So we were finding that if we pulled something in the pantry, it would have meat in it. So even though this is made of chicken stock, it doesn't really have any meat elsewhere in it. And so it's more in line with what we eat on a regular basis, fresh. So that's why we're doing this. Um, we have one extra can. Um, our canner fits seven jars. So next time we're canning later in the week, we'll just make sure to stick that vegetable jar in with everything else. Thanks so much for joining me for this quick recipe on this vegetable soup. And if you have any questions or comments, absolutely do please leave them in the, uh, in the comments. I would like to hear what you include in your pressure canning um, recipes. Thanks so much. Hey guys, just got back home from work and I wanted to show you the vegetable stew that we um, pressure canned the other day. Uh, they turned out really well. I've got seven sealed jars of vegetable soup. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these off. I'm gonna go ahead and label them. Um, but I did uh, actually forget to put in some onions. So the nice thing about something that is as um, traditional as vegetable soup is that you can change up the flavorings however you like when you take it out of the can. So um, one way to make it seem fresh or rather than just straight out of the can um, is to actually chop up some onions, saute them in a little butter or olive oil, and then add the soup to that. So it'll make it seem a little bit fresher. So that's probably something that I'll do because I really like my vegetable soup with onions. So, um, and you can also add at the time any other vegetables that you happen to have in your refrigerator. Um, just kind of um, kitchen sink soup, um, as you will and make it however you like.